Welcome to Native Talk Arizona, presented by Native Health and KRDP 90.7 FM. I'm host Lanasha Pawati. Later in the show, I'll chat with Natasha John and Jordan Manuelito, co-owners of Skoden Coffee and Tea, providing Navajo-inspired beverages and pastries. The American Indian Health Area Health Education Center, or AIH, AHEC for short, is the sixth area health education center in Arizona and the first to focus exclusively on American Indian health care system and workforce. On the phone with us to tell us more is Tashina Machine, Youth Program Coordinator at AIH, AHEC. Welcome to our show, Tashina. Thank you. Thank you so much for um, allowing me to be here today. Absolutely. And before we get started, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes. So, yat e she e yat shini mishani nishya kiaani do nakede ne. My name is Tashina Mishane. I'm the youth program coordinator for the American Indian Health Area Health Education Center. Um, I'm originally from Navajo, New Mexico, on the Navajo Reservation. And my clans that I just introduced myself are our uh, Towering House Clan and Born for Mexican People. Awesome. It's a pleasure to have you here today, Tashina. And can you tell us more about the AIH AHEC? Yes. So the uh, AIH AHEC is a grant um, funded by the University of Arizona through um, several different funds, uh, and it's primarily focused on our area health education centers, which is a national organization throughout the United States, and our current area health education center that serves American Indian health uh, populations is currently housed under the Advisory Council on Indian Health Care. So it's, it's a lot of moving parts, but overall we are a grant funded by the University of Arizona um, based on a national AHEC organization, and we are housed under the Advisory Council on Indian Health Care, um, which is a governor-sponsored program um, with the state of Arizona. Oh, wow. And I know um, you have a lot of great initiatives and programs. Um, can you tell us more about your your mission advocacy initiatives and programs? So the American Indian Health AHEC is housed under the Advisory Council on Indian Health Care. And each program has a lot of different missions, advocacy initiatives and programs that really support the overall mission of increasing the number of health professionals in health careers in Arizona, as well as the initiatives um, to increase the quality of health care being provided to tribal communities in Arizona. So we have a division on policy. We have a division on epidemiology working with our amazing um, community health representatives that serve our tribe, and then also fostering the programs that help students who are currently interested in pursuing health careers, whether it be at a local uh, clinic that serves tribal nations or even um, the big corporate uh, health entities that are Native American Uh, health professionals can serve in. So we have a long line of um, initiatives that really help students uh, on their pathways to going on to health professions and also working in partnership with tribal nations and um, Native American health professionals to increase being served um, in the state of Arizona. Oh, wow, that is so awesome. And, and it's a great resource uh, for individuals who are interested in a career in the health professions just to help them prepare. prepare. Um, Tashina, can you tell us why are these initiatives important? So right now, um, in studies that have been taking place all over the United States when it comes to 
uh, looking at health care quality for tribal nations. It's oftentimes looked at as very low numbers. We still have uh, a lot of health disparities that could be either improved by more health professionals, it can be uh, improved by more funding, and also barriers that, you know, the red tape that we see a lot in healthcare communities when it comes with um, getting our own personal uh, Native American health care plans. So the reason why these initiatives are all important is because it brings this to light uh, for different programs, different agencies to look at and narrow down where these disparities are um, depleting the healthcare quality of our, our tribal nations. So for our program, um, we know through the American Indian Health AHEC, we work to get more Native students in, interested and uh, foster their health professional goal to one day being health professions. Currently in the United States, there are just under 4,000 actively participating or actively practicing health professionals um, in our healthcare system. And that is relatively low if you look at it and they serve the whole United States. And so through the American Indian Health AHEC, we hope to push forward initiatives, programming and funding to help more Native uh, individuals serve as physicians um, and clinicians throughout the United States, but also mainly here in the state of Arizona. And kind of diving further into into that initiatives, what programs do you have planned to reach the youth that are interested in pursuing a healthcare career? So working with youth um, is very is special. We everybody always asks the question, where does health at career exploration start? Um, in many uh, research. They say it starts at a very young age, um, whether they're in from K through sixth grade. Some people say it starts in eighth grade. Um, on, and then a lot say that it starts in high school when students are really trying, starting to develop what they want to do um, after high school as a career. So for our program, we work specifically through K through 12. And my focus is in youth. Um, the high school portion. So 8th grade to 12th grade. And for those students who are just developing a career interest, oftentimes um, those resources aren't available in their local high schools or in their local communities because of the overall lack of either programming or healthcare professionals that have the time to teach youth. And that's really where the AIH AHEC is stepping in. We want to develop programs that tell students about different health careers um, that they can pursue, whether they're readily available on tribal nations or if they're like moving up all the way to like say a surgeon. Um, so we want to open their eyes to the concept of going into healthcare and really expose them to the benefits of possibly coming back to serve their own tribal communities. Oh, wow, that is so amazing and a much need um, in the community today. And I know um, AHEC is partnering with Native Health to bring one of these programs here at Native Health Central um, that we are working on that will be beginning in June called Native Scope. Can you tell us a little bit or give us a glimpse of what students are going to be um, going through in this eight-week program? So yes, yeah, so through this program, we are so happy to be partnering with for with a well-established um, already health entity that has done so much work, not only in tribal communities, um, in in urban and rural settings, but also for health profession students. Um, we we work closely with Native Health to uh, help those students who are interested in health professions get the clinical rotations that they need to succeed. And Native Scope stands for Skills, Careers, Opportunities, Pathways, and Experiences. So through this program, um, they will get the opportunity to, uh, over the summer, 
explore various types of health professions, whether it be on a research basis, um, on a clinical basis, or even on an educational perspective. Um, so things like public health, looking at public health professions, um, uh, certified nursing assistants, from allied health professions all the way up to health professions programs. Um, we also have a element where students will be able to be CPR certified um, in the, this whole session. So that is a great benefit to them. But this gives them the ability to ask questions in a safe environment and uh, have the time to work with us to get all the resources that they need, whether it be looking at the financial portion, how are they going to pay for going into a health professional school, ask questions on what kind of classes do they need um, to go into a specific health profession, and then also finding mentors um, that they can talk to um, and have access to not only over the summer, but into the school year. So that's what we hope to uh, pursue in this new initiative with Native Health. Oh, yes, definitely. And it's a great way to kind of prepare all the students that are either going into high school or who are already in high school, a great way to kind of incite them on all of the careers in healthcare and how they can prepare. And I just want to add that this program is going to be starting on Wednesday, June 12th, and the registration is still open. You can find it on the Native Health Phoenix website. Uh, but kind of going aside from this, um, Tashina, what do you hope students will get out of these programs? I'm hoping that these students will have a better understanding of the variety of health professions there are available to them, when they can start pursuing a health profession, and also break down a lot of the stereotypical barriers that um, often comes with pursuing a health profession. Um, one example that I like to use a lot with my students is that you don't have to go into a health professions program in college in order to become a doctor or a nurse. Um, they, but there are uh, key classes that you need to succeed in in order to apply for those types of programs. Um, another one, of course, is you can uh, go into allied health professions at the age of 18 um, and become a EMT, a certified nursing assistant. Um, so this is uh, what we want to accomplish uh, through this program so far and just to have a more, a better understanding of the world um, of health professions for these students. Oh, wow. And do you think that it is important to work with youth at an early age to encourage their education and consider pursuing health care? Yes. So at an early age, the more that they know, the better, um, because a lot of students ask, what do I want to be? What do what is my aspiration? But oftentimes, um, at an early age, we'll not know how to pay for it, how, um, you know, the distance from family is going to take, or even experiencing living on a college campus or um, a community college campus. So through these programs like this, starting at an early age and getting to know um, different types of education levels, um, asking questions from individuals like us to uh, define what their career paths are going to be. The earlier the, in the age that they can do that, the better. Um, especially pursuing a health career, they, you can start at any level, at any age. But the more that you know early on, the better. And it really prepares you and creates a solid foundation for students um, who are interested in um, pursuing a health career. And we know that the numbers are historically low for ind indigenous individuals in healthcare. Can you tell us more about this and your initiatives? Yes. So, um, like I said a little bit earlier, that currently in the United States, we have just under 4,000 actively practicing indigenous healthcare providers. 
um, and that is specifically for those that are specializing um, in in as a physician or a doctor level uh, capacity. And these and it's it's initiatives like that, and it's a nationwide initiative um, that you know more colleges, more uh, tribal nations are working to fill these spaces through a concept called growing our own. So looking into programs that really are produced and fostered by indigenous individuals um, to help those students through the lens of indigenous medicine and indigenous uh, cultural practices to create a better foundation for those students who will eventually go off to college. Um, So we see that taking place in many different cities and states. um, And the Arizona, our American Indian Health Area Health Education Center is one of those initiatives that the state of Arizona saw as a positive to help increase those low numbers of indigenous individuals in healthcare. Um, And through our initiatives, through, um, you know, financial assistance, a stipend that we have, um, the youth programs that we're looking to continuously develop in rural and urban settings, um, this will hopefully assist in increasing those numbers. And overall, biggest mission to bring better health care to tribal communities. Yes, definitely. And kind of talking about the individuals that are maybe further along, what suggestions do you have for individuals in college that are interested in pursuing a career in healthcare? So for our college uh, individuals who are interested in pursuing health careers, focus on the mathematics, um, the basic sciences, the, um, so like, for example, um, college uh, algebra 101, um, sciences and OCHEM chemistry. Those are the classes that you need to do well in. It doesn't matter how many times you take them over because as a health professions um, student myself, I had to take some of those classes over. And um, that was the one thing that a lot of professional health programs look at. They want to know what your math, your um, science scores were, and as long as they are A's and B's, um, that will get you in the door. Now, for college students, you have a huge strength to bring your wisdom and your cultural significance to many programs um, that will bring you, bring more experience into your, into your health career that you want to pursue. Um, there are several initiatives by universities that are summer-based programs, internships that will help you to grow um, your interest and sort of narrow down what specifically you're interested in. So finding out if you want, are interested in working in the emergency room, if you're looking at working with Uh, youth in pediatrics, or if you like to work with the elderly. Um, College is where you find that out, and through doing well in your core mathematics and science courses, as well as taking on the opportunities to do internships and extended summer programs, um, will really make you a great candidate for a health program and develop your skill level over time. That's one of my (laughs) college students. (laughs) And can you, I know you've worked with, uh, you've you've started many of these programs and initiatives, and I know you come upon many students. Can you tell us one of your favorite success stories at American Indian Health, AHEC? Yes, so two off the top of my head, well, they're they're sort of lumped all together because so far, the establishment of the American Indian Health AHEC has been a success overall. This has been a, I want to say, a 12-year um, effort to get our AHEC established. So that was a success story right off the bat. 
Um, and even in our first year, which is this year in 2023 and 24, is when we really started our programming. And we just successfully um, recruited our first cohort of uh, AHEC scholars. So the scholars are made up of nursing, medical, physical therapy, pharmacy, and public health students from um, the University of Arizona, um, NAU, and ASU. So these students are already in their graduate careers, and they are um, currently doing their immersion program with the Tanatham Nation. And we've already seen huge successes in their development and their commitment to give back to tribal communities. And those students who are Native American um, in the program have just grown in their knowledge, in their vastity of like learning more about different tribal nations and are even more motivated through every meeting that we have to work with tribal communities and break down those um, health disparities that we have. So I would say that's the one of our biggest success stories thus far. Oh, wow. I bet it is a really rewarding feeling just experiencing all of that and seeing that success around. Um, Tashina, what message do you want to leave with our listeners? So for our listeners, um, whether you are considering a health profession, if you're in high school, um, we do have those youth programs and we're continuing to build youth programs. If you um, are at a school that has a large number of Native students um, and want to start your own club, please reach out to me. We'd be interested in talking to you um, for a health health careers exploration program. Um, For our college individuals, um, we are here to help you um, navigate your pathway um, through college, through whether it be a financial um, internship that needs to need you need help with. We we are here, and then for um, tribal partners who are on the same mission to increase the number of Native health professions uh, students, the American Indian Health AHEC is still looking for continuing uh, partnerships and collaborations on programs. Um, and then for our health professions who are already doing the groundwork look to us as a resource um, for health students who are interested in health professions and those who want to increase their knowledge about health professions, working it with tribal communities and health professionals. So, yeah. And finally, how can our listeners find more information about the American Indian Health AHEC and the various summer programs and how can they contact you if they have further questions? So we do have our um, social media that is tied to the Arizona Advisory Council on Indian Healthcare. We currently have a Facebook page um, through the Arizona Advisory Council on Indian Healthcare, as well as an Instagram page. But stay tuned. We are developing our own independent American Indian Health Area Health Education Center that is going to have a wealth of knowledge, and that should be released um, in early June. So that's coming up pretty fast, and we'll have that readily available. But for now, they can find us on Instagram and Facebook through the Arizona Advisory Council on Indian Healthcare. Perfect. I would like to thank you, Tashina, for coming on air with us today to tell us about all of these great uh, programs and initiatives that you guys are doing at the American Indian Health and AHEC. So I appreciate you taking time out to let us all know. Thank you so much for having me here and look forward to seeing you at Native Scope. Coming up on Native Talk Arizona, I'll chat with Natasha John and Jordan Manuelito co-owners of Skodan Coffee and Tea. Support for KRDP 90.7 FM comes in part from Native Health, with two locations in Phoenix, 4041 North Central Avenue, Building C, near the corner of Central Avenue and Indian School Road, and at 2423 West Dunlap Avenue. Native Health is also located in Mesa at 777 
West Southern Avenue, near the corner of Southern Avenue and Extension Road. Native Health provides primary medical, dental, behavioral health, wake and wellness services for the urban Native American community. For more information, call 602-279-5262 or visit our webpage at nativehealthphoenix.org. Native Talk Arizona returns after this song. You are listening to Red by Ray Zaragoza. Softly in the breeze In the clouds I hear them now We used to be so free Get back to who we used to in a cage we could never change we used to be so free get back to who Welcome back to Native Talk Arizona, presented by Native Health and KRDP 90.7 FM. I'm host Lanasha Puwadi. On the phone with me is Natasha John and Jordan Manuelito, co-owners of Skoden Coffee and Tea, providing Navajo-inspired beverages and pastries. Hello, Natasha and Jordan, and welcome to our show. Hi, thanks for having us back. Hi, thank you. And before we get started, can you guys tell us a little bit about yourselves? I'll, I'll start. Um, my name is Natasha John. I'll introduce myself in Navajo since we're both Dine. So, Yat Eshe Natasha Yanisha, Nakai Dine El Nishle, Pashche Bashin Ado, but Ani Edesh Che, Tachitni Edesh Nale. My name is Natasha John, and I was born in Shiprock, New Mexico, and I was raised here in Phoenix, Arizona, on Ottoman and Peeposh territory. Um, I have been running Skoda and Coffee for, I would say, probably going on two years now. And right now I'm joined with uh, my one of my co-partners, Jordan Manuelito, who can introduce himself. Hi, my name is Jordan Manuelito. Um, I'm born and raised in Phoenix. Um, my mom and my dad are from up north and then now moved to Phoenix where I stay and reside. I've joined Scud and Coffee, I think, about a little over a year ago and have been with them since. 
I was going to say Jordan is incredibly modest sometimes, so they're actually one of the lead baristas and one of the co-owners now of Scott and Coffee. Oh, wow. That is so awesome. And thank you both for that introduction. And to kind of um, start things off, can you guys tell us about what Skoda and Coffee is? I would say what we've been kind of running with is we're a queer, femme, indigenous-led collective um, that wants to prioritize um, people in our community and people of color um, and kind of have a space catered to that and um we're so grateful to be be able to provide that space um as i know a lot of us uh haven't had the opportunity of being given that space um and yeah in our shop we uh center a lot of our products on indigenous artists, um, POC artists, um, and that's where we also try to source most of our stuff from, as well as locally, to kind of not leave so much of a mark, I guess. Um, and we do acknowledge that we are on uh, occupying awesome and peeposh lands. Um, so we do try to collaborate with um, many people from the area um, just to show our respect. And if I can also kind of add on to what Jordan had already mentioned as well, definitely an intersectional space for BIPOC folks. And of course, being that Jordan and I are Diné, we kind of always want to bring this essence of a home away from home. So I know a lot of people, especially from the Navajo Nation, are displaced here in Autumn, I think they say Autumn Jevid, um, which is uh, substantially Autumn, uh, occupied Autumn's land, Autumn land, which is Phoenix. And so given that there's so many urban natives here, con- including Jordan and myself, um, you know, our families had to relocate to the city just to be able to meet our basic needs um, and, and also raising raising children um so that's exactly like why my parents moved here and i know that's kind of the underlying story of a lot of natives that come to the city so um being so displaced from home what is it about five four hours away from the navajo nation and so we want to provide that space home away from home so give our native displaced folks our navajo displaced folks an essence of home so that's why we try to also like serve offerings that are um, integral to our ancestral diet as well. Oh, wow. That's awesome. And kind of talking about that, can you tell us some of your um, signature drinks or pastries and other items that you sell at Skoden Coffee? So since we last talked, we've actually really revved up our menu. So the last time we were on, I was on the podcast here. I think we were mostly because we had a very limited resources up in the Navajo Nation. I mean, I was running back and forth almost weekly just to get supplies and just to be access, uh, accessing Costco. So because there's it's, it's really, um, you know, it really is a food desert up there. And so uh, getting materials out there, even getting Amazon packages, like everything needed to be run through myself going to the city and so that was a huge challenge and so with that came a lot of equipment as well too that we didn't have the resources at the time so we didn't have espresso based drinks we everything was cold brew based so now that we're in a city proper when we were um in our in our current space that we're moving out of it was formerly called cream coffee on central and camelback and we took over that concept inside a modern furniture store called Shop for the People. And so I think since we talked, our menu has definitely like in revved up in the sense that we have all espresso, like traditional espresso based drinks. Um, and Jordan, do you want to talk about maybe because since the menu changed from what was formerly in Winter Rock and now being in the city, do you want to like kind of go through some of the like new item menu, menu items that we have? Yeah, um, so from my understanding, um, there was a honey lavender 
drink, and we kind of wanted to keep that because it was a syrup that was made in-house. So that would be on our menu. We also have a brown sugar syrup, and we normally use the syrups in our in lattes. Um, and that was made by um, that was made in house as well. And um, we kind of, with our menu, try to source our ingredients like when they're in season, um, and also try to keep it. I don't know how you'd explain it, but also like um, kind of try to do our research on ingredients that were like in our ancestral diet, as Natasha was saying. So we have those two, which are lattes. And then we also did um, pay homage to um, a barista and um, that was working with us. And we had a horchata latte. Um, and that was also, I think, from the old menu as well. We kind of just changed the name. It used to be called a cold trot, I remember. Now it's just our chata latte. So it's kind of like a, it's like a, I, I, kind of like I'd explained it before. It's like a, ra- a ramped up version of our previous menu, just because we have more access to things like espresso beans. So the espresso beans that we use now are again as jordan said locally sourced and we always try to have everything on our menu not always possible but we really try to keep it um all made by indigenous hands and so we use um a mexican roaster i believe they're mexican and indigenous um come from indigenous ancestry they're called novella coffee roasters um it's a husband and wife mickey and melissa they literally roast right down the street from our current shop here in phoenix um, we still are very much uh, try to keep a lot of our vendors that we um, worked with in our original shop and a lot of vendors that are still up on the Navajo Nation, including Laba Drive Coffee. Those coffee beans are roasted in Yatehe. Cody is Anishinaabe and Diné, a small batch roaster. And so I think one main point that we wanted to keep because we're not on our ancestral lands is we wanted to kind of give space to the folks that are there and like our way of giving back to the community up on the Navajo Nation or up on uh, any reservation is to try to collaborate with folks and hold space for them by selling their merchandise or their goods inside of our shop. Oh, wow. That is amazing. And uh, kind of talking about your your shop location, as you mentioned, um, we know that you recently shuttered your location near Central Avenue and Camelback. What are your plans next and where would you like to locate or if you have a spot already or what is the plan? Um, so our plans moving forward, I think, is to look for a more permanent space, um, something that we own. And it's going to be a lot to be able to get to that space. Um, but at the moment, we are, you know, while we're waiting, it's going to be a temporary location we're at. And that's going to be at Central Records, right, on Roosevelt and Central. Um, and we're going to, it's going to be another collaborative effort. Um, and we're so thankful, you know, able to use this space. Um, I think we'll definitely have new menu items and definitely will be like another change. But, you know, we're going to still try to stick to our roots and keep things alive. (laughs) Keep things fresh. I think since Jordan has said it's a new collaboration, so we're kind of already like thinking uh, because the current aesthetic that we have right now in place was really catered towards the aesthetic of the former location that we were at. And so in trying to also, since Central Records is like, it's a record store. I think they have like a a DJ's booth here. They have, you know, they they serve um, beverages. They have, uh, I guess they're also considered a restaurant as well. Um, It's just like a very cool hip vibe right off the light rail, right in the center of downtown Phoenix. So it's an amazing location. We've just been so blessed to have these really great locations offered to us in collaboration. So I think minimal changes to our menu, but also, you know, some small changes aesthetically as well, too. Um, We were just actually discussing before this interview, how do we want to 
change and cater our menu to fit in the location that we're occupying right now. So as Jordan said, Central Records, um, our date for opening is, I think, maybe projected mid-June to late June is what we're, we're hoping for, um, just to get back to serving coffee again. I think we're all kind of missing it. We've been closed now because we're in the process of moving everything out of our former location on Central and Camelback. So we are just excited for the collaboration and also, like I said, excited to start making coffee again. Oh, yes, definitely. And I love how you mentioned that you adjust your menu based off of where you're at. And I'm looking forward to see this um, collaboration that you have with Central Records. And can you remind us again where the location is? So it is right off of the light rail and it is on Central and Roosevelt, just south of Roosevelt. And it is on the west side of the light rail. So it's like, um, it's, it's a really walkable area. Um, it's, like I said, right in the center of downtown Phoenix. Oh, wow, awesome. We'll definitely look forward to that and also look forward um, to you opening up again in mid-June or late June. We'll definitely keep following your social media to stay up to date with your opening date and kind of talking about how you mentioned how you adjust your kind of your menus based off of where you're at. But currently, um, can you let us know what has been some of your top selling drinks? Um, I wanted to mention this uh, in the question, I think, before this. Um, On our menu, we do have a kind of like a collaborative drink between Natasha and her partner. Um, (laughs) It is uh, the the Dinam Matcha Latte. Traditionally, matcha is infused with water, the powder. Um, instead, we opt that out for Danette tea, and that's actually one of the best sellers. Um, it has the matcha mixture and then honey lavender and oat milk. And it's pretty popular, iced and hot. Um, and then I'd say our next best seller would be the brown sugar latte, as well as the uh, Danette tea, which we do serve hot or iced. Um, and also what's interesting is that we're able to, with our menu items, educate a lot of the folks that come in that aren't familiar with our culture or, you know, what we're about. And, um, I would say every customer comes in like with new piece of knowledge or leaves the place with a new piece of knowledge. (laughs) And we also do that with our packaging as well um i'm pretty sure you've seen but we did the washi tape the land back washi tape and that definitely did spark some interest and um we were able to explain what that is and kind of educate people that they are native land Wow, that's great. And it is such a unique way to really kind of share your culture with everyone, especially for those that aren't familiar um, with the Native culture already. So that is such a great way to kind of share that. And kind of um, talking about your Skoden coffee, what advice would you guys give to anybody who is maybe thinking about starting their own small business, whether it's a coffee shop or any other um, any other business shops that they are thinking of going into? <laughs> Jordan's nodding at me to start. <laughs> um, okay, let me see. What advice would I give somebody that wants to start a coffee business, right? Yes, or any type of shop. Any type of Or business. like what advice did you, would you wish that you had at the beginning of starting Skoden Coffee or what um, challenges did you face that you would want to give advice for somebody else who was maybe beginning that journey? I think for me the biggest challenge, and I hope this kind of goes – coincides with the answer that you're maybe you're looking for. But I think for me, the biggest challenge is in any business, because I also have another business as well that I run um, with my family. And I think managing expectations, 100%, I would say, and just um, 
really learning how to delegate, ask for help, managing expectations, really, really trying to work with people is incredibly difficult sometimes. It can be very seamless, but also there's so many different personalities. And I think like we, you know, time and again at Scott and Coffee have messed up where we've stepped on people's toes and, you know, people have stepped on our toes. But I think really, really that collaborative effort and also because we do a lot of community events too, learning how to also say no, learning how to set boundaries, healthy boundaries. Um, I think that's really, really something that we're trying to move towards is uh, advocating for ourselves as individuals, as a community, as a business. So I think I kind of threw a bunch of different answers out you, but I think collectively what I struggle with the most is and the best piece of advice and i wish well my dad gave me a lot of advice as well coming into this business just because he started his own business um like 10 years ago and so i think also the key factor in every conversation that i've had with him is honesty so just as long as you're honest with your product and all your affairs my dad said everything will work out for you um, but for me honestly it's really managing those expectations that everybody has for you because now that Jordan is an owner and now that we are in this position where we're taking care of people, like I feel like I have kids that I take care of now um, because I got to take care of my colleagues. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? I feel like I have to really take care of my colleagues and that's kind of, um, it's a, it's a blessing, but it's also scary as a business owner, making sure that everybody is always taken care of. And like I said, again, that kind of goes hand in hand with managing those expectations as well. Because when you're an owner, you're kind of like always mm, scrutinized sometimes um, just because you're the face of everything. And I think Jordan, um, especially considering their age, is really getting a lot of experience on seeing like how things really work from all lenses, being a barista, being a lead barista and now being an owner. Um, so that's just my answer in a very drawn out way. What do you think, Jordan? I think what Natasha said is really insightful. Um, normally when people get asked that question, it's like a lot of, you know, if you want to do it, you know, just do it. Like, <laughs> <clears throat> not really kind of like, in, like, uh, like sure it's like reassuring, but not very helpful in that way. And I think that's really nice that Natasha, like, said that and personally I would say I don't know there's going to be like a lot of downs but it's like cheesy like there's going to be a lot of downs <laughs> but you know like it's, it definitely makes the ups worth it I would say I mean there's been a lot of times where I felt like if I was doing if I was going the right way in my life and I kind of just talked to Natasha about it and we had like a heart to heart and I'd say, you know, if it's something you really want to do, just go for it. You know, like Natasha says, if you're honest with your product and everything that you're doing, then everything will work out for you. No, that was the, that's the perfect advice for anybody who is wanting to go into a business or it really applies to anybody um, for whatever career path that they are thinking about going into. And finally, can you let us know how our listeners can find more information about your upcoming plans and how can they contact either one of you? I would say for like business inquiries or like just, you know, feedback, um, definitely our email, uh, godencoffee at gmail.com. Um, and then, you know, we try our best to answer uh, direct messages on Instagram. I'm not too sure, but we do have a Facebook. Um, it's all under Skoda and Coffee. Um, and I think, yeah, that's pretty much where you can reach the both of us. We're pretty active on Instagram. So I would say if somebody just wants a quick chat, that's the best place to start is Instagram for more like we started doing catering as well because it's um it's fun and it's good supplementary income so i would say if anybody was also interested in catering or any business inquiries like jordan said email but first and foremost i would always say instagram and we're pretty good we try to be very good there's three of us managing the instagram account so we try to be very um like fast 
uh, with our responses on, on Instagram. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I would like to thank you both, Natasha and Jordan, for coming on air today to tell us about Skoda and Coffee and definitely telling us about your upcoming plans and what you have in store in the next coming month. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for listening to Native Talk Arizona, supported by Native Health and KRDP 90.7 FM. Audio editing by Javier Quiroga, and the executive producer is Susan Levy. And I'm host Lanasha Puadi. We hope you tune in again next week. If you have any questions, please email us at nativetalkaz at radiophoenix.org.